GitHub held their flagship event, GitHub Universe 2020, just a few days ago, and boy, it was full of surprises. Today, I'm going to go through all the announcements and new features presented during the event, together with some more information about them. This is all you need to know about GitHub Universe 2020. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coded Dave. Today, I have a special video for you. In fact, I don't normally go through news, but today we are going to talk about everything that has been announced and presented at the GitHub Universe 2020. As usual, you can find all the timestamps in the video description, so you can jump back and forth between the different features and announcement should you like to. But stay with me until the end, because there are some really cool features. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub, just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new videos. All right, let's jump into the universe announcement. First thing I want to talk about is the new GitHub Dark Mode. Yes, you very it right. GitHub has finally announced their own official dark theme. With this new dark mode, which is available in public beta, you will be able to change the appearance of your GitHub interface to, as the name says, a dark version. Since this new dark mode is still in beta, not every section of GitHub has been converted to it. If you want to know more about what is converted and what it isn't and how to enable it, you can check the video I've already made about this. You can find the link up here and in the video description. Next one, discussions. This is something that has been announced a while back, if I'm not wrong, around satellite this year, and so far it's been only in private beta with some large open source contributor. But now we finally have discussion enabled in public beta for all the public repos. Using discussions instead of issues, you can have open-ended threaded conversation and discussions. One way to think about it, it's as a stack overflow type thing but it's much, much more than that. And it's really a place for software communities on GitHub. It's great for QA and for building knowledge, for example, but also for community managers that look for a place to discuss where the code is going or what features should happen and so on and so forth. And in general, for all the topics and discussion that don't really belong into issues. I'm super excited for this to be finally available for all the public repos. And remember, this will not be available in private repos or GitHub Enterprise Cloud. But next, let's talk about some new cool features for GitHub Actions. First one is the workflow visualization. And essentially what this is, is providing you a visual graph of how your workflow is progressing in real time. While Actions previously did that with the live logging and you could see all the code and everything run through, and by the way, that will of course still be available, this is a little simpler and can also help you identify things that are working in parallel. There is a summary view to let you easily understand more complex workflows and make it a little easier to see how things are progressing. And of course, this is all within the GitHub experience, meaning that you will never have to leave GitHub to check everything about actions or even your source code, issue put requests, etc. And as you can see on the right side of this image, even though I apologize for the low quality of it, as things start deploying, you can start navigating to the deployment URLs as well. This will open that up for you so you can see your staging environment or whatever else you are deploying as you go through this. This is a very cool feature and I will soon have a full video dedicated to this. So if you're interested, you may consider subscribing not to miss this video. And talking about new cool features for GitHub Actions, we finally have manual approvals. This is a feature that has been long requested and basically every developer and organization I talked to they say they will have use cases and they were really waiting for manual approvals to be available so they can control their deployment workflow. So first off, manual approvals are exactly what you think they are. These features allows either a person or a team to require their approval to move a particular deployment workflow forward. And this is really helpful for teams which have specific security or compliance requirements, but in general for everyone who wishes to have more control over deployment to specific environments. And not only manual approvals give you control over your deployment, but also everything is audited and recorded, so you will always be able to know what happened, when it happened, and who did it. This new feature will be available only in public repos and in GitHub Enterprise Cloud. Unfortunately, if you have private repos, for example, in a Teams plan, they will not receive this feature, at least for the time being. But stay tuned because, again, I plan to have a full video just about this. Another pretty cool feature that has been announced, even though it's somehow minor, 
is the ability to automatically merge a pull request into the base branch. Right now, when you submit a pull request on GitHub, you often have to spend a lot of time waiting for approval, status checks to complete, etc. And then you gotta remember to check back in so that you can actually have the code merged. And if you forget to do that, or if you wait, uh, let's say a day or two, sometimes even other changes come in and you have to redo your pull request or remerge and so on and so forth. This new feature basically lets the developer submit a pull request to a code base and mark it to be automatically merged when it's approved and all the checks have passed. Of course, this is totally optional, but in my opinion, is a significant time saving and improving experience. And of course, repo admins and org admins can decide to disable this feature if they don't want the PRs on their repos to be automatically merged. Let's now change page and talk a little bit about security. The first new feature announced in this category is the dependency review. This new feature, released in beta for the enterprise cloud, will automatically scan your dependencies during a pull request to detect if any change has been made or any vulnerable or out-of-date components have been added as part of that PR. This is super important because currently developers can find about those kind of vulnerabilities basically post-merge, so it's effectively uh, after de facto discovery and alert. While now with this new feature, everything is actually shifted left, so developers and team leaders will be able to identify those vulnerabilities as soon as possible into the dev chain. And cool fact, GitHub, with this feature, is the first entity in the market to provide a native, proactive approach for this concept. So, way to go GitHub. And still talking about security, a quick word about code scanning. Code scanning, as you may know, is the foundation of the code scanning alert feature that allows you to identify vulnerabilities and security issues in your code base. The team did a great job in optimizing this because now the time that code scanning takes to actively scan your repo is 54% lower than before. And also the startup time is greatly reduced. Moreover, Code scanning has been in beta for a while, and now it's finally released in GA for GitHub Enterprise Cloud, and will also be part of the upcoming GitHub Enterprise Server 3.0. Speaking of which, let's say welcome to GitHub Enterprise Server 3.0. This version will be launching on December 16, 2020, and it will bring a ton of innovation in the server space. In fact, it will ship with all everyone using GitHub Server was waiting for, actions, packages, and even advanced security. And in fact, as we've seen a minute ago, code scanning will be included in the GitHub Enterprise Server 3.0, as well as secret scanning. And as I've said in the video I made about the new features of the GitHub mobile app, you can find the link up here and in the video description if you've missed it, GitHub for Mobile is finally available also for GitHub Enterprise Server. Lastly, let's talk about sponsors for companies. This is a great opportunity for GitHub's enterprise clients to start contributing to projects that matter to them. GitHub has launched this at Universe with some really big names showing some great momentum behind this initiative, from companies who have contributed significant dollars to open source to ensure those projects stay healthy and are able to support them over time. And so Sponsors for Companies is a great opportunity for organizations to ensure that they can engage securely and they can support those organizations that they depend on. I'm really excited about this because I see it as both an opportunity to help open source communities, but also as an opportunity to help boosting the software supply chain as a whole. All right, that's it for today. Those were all the most important announcements and new features presented by GitHub at their flagship event, GitHub Universe 2020 last week. As you have seen, we have some very cool features coming for actions, security, and the development community overall. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this and what is your one favorite announcement or new features presented. And boy, it was full of surprises. You can find the timestamp, thumb but in my opinion, it's a significant site. Hmm. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.